So, we can write the, um, uh, the steady flow energy equation uh, in a general form like this. We use the differential form of the energy equation in uh, deriving the uh, expression for st um, stagnation temperature. But if you use the, um, uh, the uh, normal form of the energy equation connecting two states, we may write it like this. In the general form, because now here we are adding uh, the effects of both uh, heat addition removal and work addition removal. So, you can free, uh, see from this that when we add heat to a flow, Q is positive and the stagnation temperature increases. <coughs> if we remove heat from the flow, uh, Q is negative and stagnation temperature decreases. Now, we can also bring about a change in stagnation, uh, stagnation state by actually uh, adding or removing work. Okay. So, when we have a compressor where uh, work is done, right? Um, so basically what we are saying is, um, we can change the stagnation state in the absence of work interaction by heat interaction. Adding heat increases the stagnation temperature, uh, removing heat decreases the stagnation temperature. In the absence of heat, adiabatic flow, we can change the stagnation state by adding or uh, extracting work from the flow. So, across an adiabatic compressor where work is done on the flow, stagnation pressure increases. Remember, W is negative in this case in our sign convention. And across a turbine where work is extracted from the fluid, W is greater than 0, stagnation pressure decreases. So, any loss of stagnation pressure is undesirable because it is tantamount to a loss of work. That is the most important part. Okay. So, uh, any loss of stagnation pressure uh, indicates that there are irreversibilities in the flow and as a result of irreversibilities, there is entropy generation in the universe, loss of exergy and loss of work. So, uh, as I mentioned before, so we may have uh, uh, two uh, states like this, one and two. And the corresponding stagnation state uh, here would be T01, uh, T01, or let me just write it as uh, uh, <coughs> stagnation state 0, 1, this is stagnation state 0, 2. And keep in mind that S02 equal to S2 and S01 equal to S1 because the deceleration process is isentropic. So, I can now uh, apply TDS relationship between these two states and write this expression. <coughs> so, uh, if we have irreversibilities in an adiabatic flow field, if you have an adiabatic flow field, that means T02 equal to T01. And if you have irreversibilities, then S2 is uh, greater than S1, which means that S2 is greater than S1, which then implies that P02 is less than P01. There is a loss of stagnation pressure if there are any irreversibilities between uh, state 1 and state 2. Okay, assuming that this is the flow direction. <coughs> if there are any irreversibilities between state 1 and state 2, S2 is greater than S1. So, P02 is less than P01. The flow is adiabatic. Now, if the flow itself is isentropic everywhere, then the stagnation pressure and stagnation temperature will be the same everywhere. So, it is important to bear that also in mind. If the flow itself is isentropic everywhere, then S2 is equal to S1, equal to S3 and so on. And the stagnation pressure and stagnation temperature will remain the same between points 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, in that case, stagnation uh, state becomes a global reference state because it is the same for the entire flow. <coughs> so, stagnation state uh, can be thought of as a local reference state as well as a global reference state. It is an excellent indication. In case stagnation pressure changes from one point in the flow field to another, we can then directly infer that in the absence of any heat interaction, that there must be an irreversibility in the flow field. So, this is why we said earlier that inferences, <coughs> the advantages of defining a reference state is that important physics in the flow can be brought out clearly by the use of this reference state. So, you can see how the stagnation state brings about 
inferences on the reversibility is present in the flow field or any work uh, addition or removal in the flow field, heat addition or removal in the flow field. Um, we uh, customarily use TS diagram and PV diagram in compressible flows to indicate thermodynamic states and thermodynamic processes. Okay. Now, let us first uh, start with the TS diagram. So, the TDS relation for, um, for a calorically perfect gas reads like this. So, we will discuss calorically perfect gas first and then I will make a mention about uh, steam and uh, uh, refrigerant which are not calorically perfect. Okay. So, we may write uh, this as CVDT minus PDV. So, uh, a constant uh, specific volume lines or lines of constant specific volume have a slope which is given by this expression T over CV. So, in the same manner from uh, the alternative form of uh, uh, TDS relationship, we may show that the uh, slope uh, at any point of an ISO bar. Okay. So, this would be a slope of an ISO core. So, this is the slope of an ISO bar. Slope of an ISO bar uh, is given by uh, or is given as T over Cp. So, it is clear from here that uh, the ISO cores are actually steeper than ISO bars because this uh, T over Cv since Cp is greater than Cv, ISO cores have a higher slope than the ISO bar. So, and that is illustrated here. So, you can see that uh, ISO cores are actually steeper than ISO bars. And the slope is positive which is also indicated here and it increases with temperature for both of them as temperature increases uh, the, <coughs> the iso bars and iso cores become uh, steeper and as temperature decreases iso cores and iso bars become shallower and the slope is positive. Most importantly iso cores are steeper than iso bars. This information would be very useful later on when we uh, start looking at actual flow fields. Now, in the same manner, notice that uh, basically we are looking at two sets of coordinates TS or PV. So, in a TS diagram, we want to know uh, how uh, constant uh, iso cores and iso bars are appearing in the TS diagram. Okay. So, basically we have t, uh, two sets of coordinates TS and PV. So, on a uh, TS diagram, we want to know and the, uh, the shape and orientation of iso bars and iso cores. Whereas, in a PV diagram, we want to know the shape and uh, uh, orientation of isotherms and isotropes. Okay? So, this would be an isotrope and this is an isotherm. <coughs> So, notice that uh, both the isentrope and the isotherm have a negative slope in, uh, in the PV diagram which is why these lines look like this. And once again uh, the magnitude uh, of the slope of the isentrope is actually greater than the uh, slope of the uh, isotherm and which is indicated here. So, S equal to constant lines are steeper than the T equal to constant of isotherms. So, you should remember uh, this diagram, uh, the uh, appearance the, or rather the, uh, uh, the slope and orientation of uh, um, uh, isobars and isocodes in a TS diagram and the shape and, or slope and orientation of isotherms and isentropes on a PV diagram. Okay, so, we mentioned that we uh, use the uh, TS and PV diagrams to locate states, uh, to illustrate states and also to illustrate thermodynamic processes. Okay. So, when we have a one dimensional flow field, that is one component of velocity and two thermodynamic properties, let us take them to be T1 and S1. It can be T1 and P1 and so on, but for the sake of simplicity, here we will take them to be T1 and S1. So, how do we locate the state in a TS or a PV diagram? That is the next question that we are going to ask. 
the uh, uh, the reason why we ask this question is that uh, it requires a little bit of uh, careful thinking because T1 and S1 are thermodynamic properties. So, showing them, uh, showing the state given a value of T V and S is trivial to do on a, a T S diagram. So, basically, you know, I, I draw T S coordinates like this. So, I locate state 1, I am given T1, I am given S1. The difficulty is how do I show V1? So, I may have many states, all of which have same T1 and S1, but different velocities. How do I illustrate velocity which is a fluid dynamic quantity? So, these are thermodynamic properties. <coughs> Whereas V1 is a fluid dynamic property. <coughs> How do we illustrate uh, the velocity in this uh, diagram? Velocity corresponding to state 1 in this diagram because state 1 is unique. Uh, three property values are required and they are given T, S, and V. Uh, a clue about this is uh, available from the energy equation. Remember, the differential form of the energy equation looks like this d of h plus v square over 2 equal to 0 and this quantity may be defined as a stagnation enthalpy. We defined it as stagnation enthalpy at 0 equal to h plus v square over 2 at a given point in the flow field. Now, for a calorically perfect gas, this expression may be rewritten like this d of t plus v square over 2 Cp equal to 0. And the clue that we were looking for is provided here. <coughs> so, the quantity V square over 2 Cp has uh, the same unit as the static temperature and it is simply being added to the static temperature. <coughs> so, that is the uh, clue that we are looking for. So, if you go to a TS diagram like this, we ask the question how do we show uh, fluid dynamic quantity in this. So, basically what it seems is that <coughs> we simply add uh, um, an amount of uh, let us say V1 square over 2 Cp as you can see from here, we simply add an, um, a quantity uh, V1 square over 2 Cp to state 1. And uh, so, now this state is completely defined. So, the state here has uh, as you can see uh, the velocity added to this and that actually fixes, uh, <coughs> I am sorry, that allows us to uh, show velocity also in a TS diagram. <coughs> so, <coughs> so, this was the given uh, state. So, state 1 is shown here, T1 was given, S1 was given. So, on a PV diagram, again uh, T1 was uh, given and S1 is also given. So, the given state lies here and we may ret uh, retrieve P1 uh, or the isobar corresponding to the pressure, static pressure looks like this and it looks like this here. It is shown as a straight line only for the sake of illustration. Now, we will add an amount equal to V1 square over 2 Cp to this like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Again remember we need to do this without changing the uh, given value of uh, specific entropy. T1 and S1 were given. So, this addition must take place without changing the uh, uh, value of S1 which means that we should end up with the state which has the same S1, okay, and that is what I have shown here. So I end up with a state which has the same S1 as state 1. Similarly, here I travel along this isentrope like this <coughs> and add an amount V1 square over 2 Cp to the static temperature, which means that I end up at a new isotherm is here and a new isotherm which is here in these two diagrams. And you know what that state is because T1 plus V1 square over Tcp is nothing but T01. 
So, this isotherm just is equal to T01 and same is shown uh, on a PV diagram here. So, this is state uh, 0, 0,1 again this is state 0, 0,1. So, the isobar corresponding to uh, state 0, 0,1 is shown like this and P01 is shown like this. So, every static state, so notice that. So, the thermodynamic properties actually define the static state. But the thermodynamic and the fluid dynamic property together define the stagnation state. And the stagnation state is nothing but stagnation pressure, stagnation temperature, stagnation density, which are all thermodynamic properties and they can be easily illustrated on a TS or PV diagram. That is the general idea. Velocity is a fluid dynamic property. But we convert it into a, uh, into a thermodynamic property by using the notion of adiabatic deceleration, right? Which is why we insisted that we should travel along the same S equal to constant line. And similarly, here also we insisted that we should travel along the same S equal to constant line. So, this is nothing but the stagnation state T01 and P01. So, this is how we actually uh, can depict um, uh, state in the flow field at a point in the flow field on a TS or PV diagram. So, now you begin to understand or realize why reference states are so important because they play such a role, such an important role in conveying actual information to us. Now, is this all we can do? Uh, can, we, um, uh, can we depict any more information? For instance, uh, let us say that you know uh, we ask the question is the state 1 as shown here, can we possibly show information concerning speed of sound for instance or is this state subsonic or supersonic, is state 1 subsonic or supersonic, can we possibly indicate that information. So, if you want to indicate that information then we must be able to show uh, speed of sound on this diagram which should not be too difficult to do because uh, it is uh, you know it involves only the temperature in the case of a uh, calorically perfect gas right. So, we should be able to do that. So, we can in fact do that uh, in the following manner. Remember uh, if you go back to the expression involving the stagnation temperature simply by setting m equal to 1. So, in this expression, if I set m equal to 1, that means the local velocity is equal to the local speed of sound, which means the static temperature is actually the sonic state, right. So, by setting m equal to 1, I actually can get, once I know T0, uh, I can get T star by simply setting m equal to 1 like this. So, once I have this, I can illustrate again the sonic state and T star which corresponds to m equal to 1. So, states that are above this line or subsonic states and states that are below this line m equal to 1 line or supersonic states. Why? Because this distance is nothing but A1 square over 2 Cp. So, any state which lies above this line must then have a velocity v to reach the same stagnation state, it has to have a velocity v which is less than the speed of sound. And any state on this side okay, must have a velocity greater than the speed of sound in order to reach the same stagnation state. Right? That is why this is the m equal to 1 line, these are subsonic states and these are supersonic states. Of course, when I uh, say states, I am using a plural here, I have to be careful because we have, we have, we are doing everything with respect to the given state 1. Okay? So, this allows us to uh, decide whether the given state is a subsonic state or supersonic state. Now, in case the stagnation temperature remained the same throughout the flow field, then I can carry over this to 
all the other states in the flow field. So, any state in the flow field which is above this line has to be a subsonic state and any state below this has to be a supersonic uh, state. So, in that case the, uh, uh, the stagnation state becomes a global reference state. So, I can use the uh, plural of state. Otherwise, I can only say that the given state is subsonic or supersonic. Okay? And in the same manner, you can see the uh, isotherm corresponding to T equal to T star. So, this is the isotherm corresponding to T equal to T star. So, you can see that I illustrated here. This is the sonic state. And uh, states that lie uh, that lie along this S equal to S1 like this or subsonic states and states that lie along uh, this S equal to S1 below this are supersonic states. So, these are subsonic states m less than 1 and these are supersonic states m greater than 1. So, you can see how much information can be uh, about the flow field can be conveyed uh, in a TS or PV diagram. Again, here we have looked only at one state. Now, in case uh, you know uh, the entire flow is isentropic, then uh, the entire flow field information can be contained in just a single line S equal to S1. So, this is a very powerful uh, way of illustrating the flow field number 1 and what makes it possible uh, or the inferences that we are drawing from the, the sonic state which was the one reference state that we one of the reference states that we discussed and the stagnation state which was the other reference state that we discussed. These are the two most important reference states in uh, gas dynamics or compressible flow. In case the given state uh, instead of being a subsonic state had it been supersonic it would have looked like this. So, one prime here is a supersonic state. So, notice that this is A1 square over 2 Cp and this is A1 prime square I am sorry. So, this is V1 prime square over 2 Cp and, and as you can see V1 prime is greater than A1 which is why it is a supersonic state. The same manner 1 prime is uh, indicated on the same S equal to S1 line S1, uh, S equal to S1 isentrope in a PV diagram. Now, so we have we have uh, done all this for a calorically perfect gas. Notice that most of these things would not be possible in the case of a, a real gas like steam or refrigerant. But the ideas and concepts carry over without any difficulty. So basically, what we uh, what we do in the case of a real gas is the following. We do not define a stagnation uh, temperature, but we actually use a stagnation uh, enthalpy. So, we do not use T s diagrams in the case of real gases, we use H s diagrams. Okay? This is still true, we have not uh, made any assumption while deriving this. And S 0 equal to S is applicable regardless of whether the fluid is calorically perfect or not. So, those are the two important things. So, S equal to constant and uh, in going from uh, state 1 to the stagnation state and H0 equal to this are still uh, relevant and applicable. So, we can uh, use the uh, HS diagram to illustrate this uh, you know these ideas. We will not use TS, but we will use HS and if you use HS then notice that instead of V square over 2 Cp, we simply add V square over 2 to the static enthalpy. Notice that in that case, this is called a static enthalpy. So, we add V square over 2 to, a, uh, to the static enthalpy to uh, arrive at the stagnation state. So, here we added V1 square over 2 Cp to the static temperature to arrive at the stagnation state. In the case of a real gas, we will add V square over 2 to the static enthalpy to arrive at the stagnation state. Stagnation state is still fixed because H0 is known, S0 is equal to S. Only two properties are required to fix the state in a TS or PV diagram. right? So, in the case of a real gas such as steam or refrigerant, we add V square over 2 to the static enthalpy 
and we will use HS coordinates for depicting states and processes.